We now have a social credit system right here in the United States that has been installed quietly, interestingly, not by the government, but instead by private businesses and banks. It's in a similar ways, really, to the way the Chinese Communist Party's social credit system works. Rather than use a CCP standard of adherence to the ruling regime, it's instead based on the social justice standards under ESG, or environmental and social governance. As ESG criteria assesses businesses, sustainability, and ethics, a personal ESG score, just like the big corporate ones, offers insight into a person's commitment to sustainable practices, and apparently we're all committed to this whether we like it or not. Your personal ESG score is calculated based on three main factors, environmental, social, and governance, which includes, for example, your purchase history. What products are you choosing to buy? Already, apparently, purchasing a gun, buying alcohol, or other items can affect your personal ESG score. Your sales history, your public records, including your credit reports, all of these are considered to gauge your impact on the environment and society. But because people don't want these things, they've found that they have to try to force people to want these things. Synchron Inc. is launching an online registry today to recruit patients to join a clinical trial testing out brain chip implants. Their product, the Synchron Switch, allows people with little to no mobility to operate technology such as cursors with their mind, allowing for an expanded level of communication and independence. Synchron, which is based in New York, is a competitor of Elon Musk's Neuralink, but is farther along in the testing process than them and has a different way of implanting the chip in the brain. The company has already implanted its chip in six patients, including four in Australia who have reported no serious side effects. Synchron's trial will include patients who suffer from paralysis due to things like strokes or conditions like ALS or multiple sclerosis. But before they can begin this larger study in the U.S., Synchron is still waiting on authorization from the U.S. FDA. This news really caught my attention because the concept of a brain chip implant is kind of freaky to most people. But to see the level of independence and communication it could offer to people who suffer from paralysis or who have disabilities is really interesting. And honestly, it makes it a really groundbreaking technology.
The book Russian Icons by Father Vladimir Ivanov, recently rediscovered, we find the most interesting collection of Christian icons. It is of high interest for two reasons. Number one, it depicts the various Christian icons as black. And number two, this is not found in Western Europe, but well in Eastern Europe and Russia. This means that black people were venerated as deities from Spain to France, Italy, Germany, and all the way to Russia. In some, all over Europe. There are at least 500 black Madonnas in Europe, not counting the ones hidden in the Vatican, 128 in France alone. And you need to remember that these icons survived multiple waves of iconoclasm. This means that in the past, they would have been ubiquitous throughout Europe, before the great artists like Michelangelo and Leonardo were commissioned to start painting the classic Europeanized face of Jesus that we know today. So then, as always, if we ask the critical questions, if the mainstream historical narrative is true, and that black people have never achieved anything of note in history, why then were they depicted and venerated all over Europe? Even more intriguing, what were black people doing in so many depictions, descriptions, sculptures, and plays in Europe at all? For those who have been listening, it is simply because they were present in such numbers and it yielded such influence that even the planned erasure and systematic destruction of the icon survived from Western Europe to Eastern Europe, from Germany to Italy.